So this time we're going to look at angles on parallel lines. But let's just think about the stuff that we met before. So we did angles on straight lines before, add to 180, because these things will be useful today. So if I've got two angles on a straight line, they will add up to 180 degrees together. Uh, angles around a point add up to 360. So if you've got a point and you've got you know, various angles coming off of this, all of those will add up to 360 degrees. If you've got a triangle, the angles inside that triangle will always add up to 180. And if you've got a four-sided shape called a quadrilateral, the angles inside that are going to add up to 360. And that's always true for a triangle, it's 180, and always true for a four-sided shape that it's 360 degrees, okay? So, right, one quick one we're gonna look at first before we get onto the parallel lines, is vertically opposite angles. And these come when you've got two lines crossing. If I just get a couple of colors on here. So we've got uh, one angle here. Well, what we can say about this one is the angle opposite to it will be equal. Now, it's really important with all of these, like we said last time, that you remember these sentences. These are like little quotes that we need to, to rock out when we want to give reasons. When a question says gives reasons for your answers, this is what it means. And in this case, I would say that angle is equal to that one because vertically opposite angles are equal, right? Keywords, vertically opposite angles are equal. You have to get those words in to get the marks. Uh, also, as well as just those, clearly, if, uh, if we're thinking about this angle here, it will also be the same as its opposite angle as well. But you do need to say vertically opposite. Don't ask me why it says vertically opposite because, you know, depends which way round it is, doesn't it? But we call them vertically opposite angles and they are equal, okay? So if I was doing question on this, like this one, I've got one angle there and it asked me to find the size of angles X and Y give reasons for your answer. Well, firstly, I could, I'm could. i gonna do X and then Y, right? We're gonna do them in order. Now, 126 and X are not vertically opposite angles. 126 is opposite the Y. But what I would do is go back to the angles, the reasons I knew before. So I'd use angles on a straight line, right? Because if we imagine this straight, ooh, oops, wobbly line, or a straight line coming through there with that diagonal line on it, the two angles either side are going to add up to 180. Let's just get rid of those rubbish, rubbish wobbly lines. So that's the reason I give. And I would do for x, it would be 180, take away 126 equals 54 degrees. Okay, so ver at angles on a straight line add up to 180. Now for y, I can straight away say that's 126 degrees and just write down the vertically opposite angles are equal, because they are. Now, if I needed this angle in here, which they haven't asked for, I would know that it is also vertically opposite to x. So it would be 54 degrees as well. All right, there's one for you to do. I want you to find uh, x and give a reason, and then find the value of y and give a reason for that as well, please. Pause the video, unpause when you've written it. Don't just say it in your head, write it down. Okay, so first of all, x. Well, x is vertically opposite 68. So we say vertically opposite angles are equal. So x is equal to 68 degrees. Then I need to know y. Well, I'm going to you know, think about the straight line. It doesn't actually ma matter which line I use because in either direction it says 68. And I'm gonna think about these as being uh, angles on a straight line, because they are. I've got that angle there that angle there, they add up to 180. So if I do 180 take away 68, I am left with 112 degrees. All right, so don't forget the old uh, ones we had, the angles around a point or angles on a straight line, particularly angles on a straight line, because that will come up a lot today. And then these ones that are opposite are vertically opposite angles, and they are equal. Right, onto the parallel lines. Let's first of all have a couple of lines just like we had before. So we've got two lines crossing here. Now what you already know from vertically opposite angles that we have a couple of pairs of matching angles. We've got that one and it matches that angle that side. And if I change color, 
So annoyingly, there's no quick key for that. I've looked up lots of times. Okay, so that angle there, the one I've colored blue, is equal to this one because vertically opposite angles are equal. Now let's take this line, this line that's sort of horizontal at the moment, and just drag it straight up the page. I'm not going to change its angle. It's just going to go straight up like that. There we go. Well, the angles that it makes with this diagonal line are still going to be the same. So that angle will be equal to that one because vertically opposite angles are equal. But because it's a parallel line, it makes the same angle with the one at the bottom there. So actually I know all these blue angles are equal. And also all the red ones are equal when I come to drawing those in as well. So that angle there is equal to that angle that I've just colored in there. Okay. Now, obviously in a question, I need to know that these lines are parallel to be able to sort of know this fact that those angles are the same. And so they put two little arrows or one arrow on each or a pair of arrows on each, but they need to match. And this shows that this pair of lines are parallel. They never meet a bit like train tracks, but doesn't go around a corner. So they just keep going straight. And because of that, I know that these pairs of angles are going to match. Now with this, Again, I've got some quotes. I've got three more that we need to remember and be able to write down when we spot these angles. And we've got three different types. There are corresponding angles, alternate angles, and co-interior angles. Sometimes these are called uh, allied. I'm trying to remember how they spell allied. A-double-L-I-E-D, yeah. Uh, sometimes they call them allied angles uh, I usually stick with the other one, which is co-interior. Now, uh, jumping ahead, how to spot them, right? So here's how we spot them. And for this, you need to have a highlighter, or at least a mental highlighter stuck inside your head. But it's better if you've got an actual one and do this on the exam paper. Okay, I've got two parallel lines, because these have both got arrows in, and uh, a diagonal line going across it. It's got a posh name called transverse line, but we don't need to know that. Now, with the two angles, obviously an angle, we, we said before, um, you know, is sort of between two lines. It's the, the turn between two lines. So if I highlight around the two lines that make up angle X, and then also highlight around the two lines that make up my other angle of 70 degrees, now I already know they're going to be the same. I can intuitively look at that. But actually, if you highlight around it, what we're looking for is this F shape that it's made. Okay, the F's upside down, but that doesn't matter. If it's an F shape, it means they are corresponding angles, right? So you highlight around the two angles and then see what shape it makes. F is corresponding. Here's another one. Pair of parallel lines again with one diagonal line going across. Highlight around the two angles like I'm doing. So I've highlighted around that one. I've highlighted around that one. And we get a Z shape. Now, sometimes that Z shape is like mirrored. It's backwards, but it's still distinctly a Z it's a bit like Zorro when he gets his sword in the... Anyway, so if you get a Z shape, it's alternate angles. I mean, you can sort of look at them. They are alternate sides of the diagonal line. But I'll tell you what, just stick to the highlighting. F shapes may mean they're corresponding. Z means they are alternate. Now, again, you can just look at them and kind of see that they're probably the same. But we need this reason. So we need to be able to highlight and decide, is it corresponding, alternate, or the other one, of course... Oh, I forgot my little highlight was going to disappear there when I change pages. That's a bit frustrating, isn't it? So let's just put those back in. Remember, highlight around your two angles, just around the two lines that make them up. <clears throat> F is corresponding. Z is alternate. Now this other one, let's see what shape this makes. Highlight around the two angles. Oh, we've got a kind of C. Now this is a backwards C. Again, a bit like the Z, it can be reflected backwards. But if you've got this kind of C shape, they are co-interior angles. Okay, so angles on parallel lines. If it's an F, it's corresponding. If it's a Z, it's alternate. And if it's a C shape, it's co-interior. Yep, good. Now, the sentences you need to remember. Just like those quotes you need to remember for your English exam, we have quotes, just ours are cooler and shorter. Uh, we must give reasons for the answers. This is where a lot of the marks are. So you don't need to rave on about Lady Macbeth or blood or anything like that. You just need to remember corresponding angles are equal.
you need to remember alternate angles are equal. And then the weird one is co-interior angles sum to 180. It wouldn't matter if you put add to 180. They'd know what you meant. But these lines you need to remember. I can't say that enough. If it's an F shape, then they are corresponding angles and they are equal, right? That, that means, if I go back to my pen, that this angle in here is 70 degrees. Why is my... Where's that highlighter? I don't write in highlighter. Let's do that again. Um, that angle in there is 70 degrees because corresponding angles are equal. This angle in here is 31 degrees because alternate angles are equal. It's a Z shape. And this one in here, uh, if I do 180 take away 48, I'm left with 132 degrees. So this one is 132 because co interior angles sum to 180. Right, lots of information I know, which is why I've put it up here in a little picture of a highlighter in case either you don't know what a highlighter looks like or just to remind you that that's what you need to do. So F shape corresponding, Z alternate, C co interior, and then three reasons. Corresponding angles are equal. Alternate angles are equal. Co interior angles sum to 180 degrees. I'll show you what I mean. This is how we do it. You get your highlighter. And let's change that highlighter color back as well, because who on earth highlights in blue? It's not even a highlighter color. Right, highlight around your two angles. One, that one, and highlight around that one. What sort of shape have I got? That's correct. You've got a Z shape, which means they are alternate angles, and alternate angles are equal. So that's what you'd write. And then you'd straight away know, hang on, let's just go back to my pen. And let's change that to a blue, I want a blue pen. Um, that this angle in here is 88 degrees because alternate angles are equal. All right, so if you remember these phrases and write them down, quite often there's not a lot of calculating to do. Back to the highlighter. Highlight round your two angles. What shape have we got? That's right, we've got a C shape, so it's co-interior angles, and co-interior angles sum to 180. Let's go back to the pen, which means I do need to do a bit of calculating here. So do 180, take away 128 to see what's left, which is 52 degrees. So X is 52 degrees, and you can see that they are different sizes, that does help as well. But remember, highlight around the shape, see what you've got every time, highlight. So, going back to my highlighter, highlight round the two lines that make up the angle. On each angle, see what shape you've got. Well, it's not a C, it's not a Z, it is an F shape. F angles are corresponding angles. So, corresponding angles are equal, which means that that is 70 degrees, because they are equal. Get the idea? Well, good, I'm going to do it some more, because I want you to really get this. Right, if I highlight around these, what shape do I get? I get a C. It's backwards or you know, spun around, but it's still C. That is co, or that is. They are co interior angles, and co interior angles sum to 180. So a bit of working out here 180 take away 53 equals 127 degrees. Every time, highlight, write the sentence, work out the angle. Highlight round these two. So I'm going to highlight around that one. I'm going to highlight around this one. Okay, now they didn't quite meet, so I'm just going to extend one of them a little bit. So it does. And you can see it's an F shape. And an F is corresponding. Corresponding angles are equal. So if I go back to my pen, I know that this angle is 42 degrees. Uh, one more, I think. Okay, again, what do I do first? Highlight. Highlight around the angles. What shape have I got? It's kind of a Z shape, isn't it? And so, Z is alternate. These are alternate angles, and they are equal. So, that one is going to be 80 degrees. Highlight, look for the shape, write the sentence, Work out what the angle is. 
And there you go, there are lots for you to do. So you can pause the video for a good long time. Write these down please, don't just keep them in your head. Highlight round them or mentally highlight round these. Um, and then, you know, work out what the angle is, yeah? Okay, don't forget to write the reason down for each one. Off you go. Oh, yeah, there we go. God, God, surprised me there a little bit. Right, the first ones, if I go back to my highlighter, you can see that if I highlight around these, actually, as you would probably discovered, hopefully, that they all make an F shape when I highlight around the two angles. So highlight around that one, F shape. Highlight around this one, and that angle down there. They are all F shapes, which means all of these have the same reason. They are corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are equal, which means this one is 35, this one is 33, this one is 125, and this one is 32. The next ones, we do some highlighting. So highlight around there, and highlight around there. I've got a Z, and as you probably discovered, or hopefully discovered, all of them, if you highlight round the two lines that make up each angle, you get a Z. Now this one at the bottom is a bit of an open Z, but it's still a kind of Z, isn't it? Yes, it is. Don't care what you say. Uh, and they are alternate angles, and alternate angles are also equal. So this is 115 degrees. This one is 35 degrees. That one is 72. That is 116. And so on to the last ones. Again, back to the highlighter. Highlight around that angle. Highlight around that angle. I get a C shape, sort of backwards C shape. So highlight around that, highlight around that. I also get a C, and as you probably discovered, if you did properly, all of these are actually the same type. They're all C shapes, which is co-interior. So co-interior angles sum to 180. So back to my pen. Each time on this one then, I need to do 180, take away the angle that's there to get my angle. So that's 60 degrees. 140, oh sorry, 180, take away the 45, leaves 35 degrees. 180, take away 116, leaves 64 degrees. Don't know why I've got this habit of putting double lines under my answers. And 180, take away 73, equals 107 degrees. All right, I hope you did okay with those. There's the beat to say that I did great. Onwards then. Oh, apparently my Mac is low on battery. That's exciting halfway through a recording session. So we'll try and get that sorted. I'll get, uh, get my PA on that. Okay, so here's another example. Now, sometimes you get ones here like this one where there's nothing that connects these two angles with either corresponding alternate and co-interior. And you can soon sort of prove that essentially by highlighting around it and seeing what shape you get. Well, in this case, I don't get any of those. I don't get an F, I don't get a Z, and I don't get a C shape. So it's none of those. So what I need to do is go back to my earlier examples, my angles on a straight line or vertically opposite angles and so on. And there's a couple of ways you could do this. There's always usually more than one way because there are so many repeating angles around here. But I'm going to use angles on a straight line, sum to 180, to find this angle in there. Okay, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a pen. Right, so that angle just in there. So I've got angles on a straight line. Let's do 180, take away 91, equals 89 degrees. Right, so this one in here is 89 degrees. Then I've got two that match, okay? I can just highlight this to show you. Because that one there, and highlight around that angle, look, it's an F shape, which means we have corresponding angles, and they are equal, even though that goes right through my writing. Which means X equals 89 degrees. So I had to give two reasons. But the first one is always on these, if you can't connect it straight away, use either angles on a straight line or vertically opposite angles. 
So like this one, this time I'm going to use, uh, I don't know, what are we going to use on this one first? Oh, co-interior angles. Let's do co-interior angles add to, uh, sum to 180, right? Now I'm going to do that because if you look at these two angles just in there, they, the one I'm just about to write in, those two are co-interior, which means they add up to 180. So 180 take away 124 equals 56 degrees. So that one in there is 56 degrees. Then, look, these two are vertically opposite. They're on just the sort of crossroads here. So I put vertically ang opposite angles are equal, and I can tell that x is 56. So first of all, you know, nearly always use one reason, then, then another, you know? Just try and get something that's going to match. Right, your turn. Have a go at that one, please. I want both the reasons you use. And there are, more, you know, there is more than one way of doing it. So yours might not match with mine, but the final answer will be the same. Okay, pause the video. Unpause when you're done. Unpause then. So the reason I chose first was... Ooh, ooh come back. It's gone away. Uh, I decided to do... Um, uh, angles on a straight line. So I would write with my bad handwriting angles on a straight line add to 180 degrees and that means I can work out the angle this side and I would do 180 take away 119 would be 61 degrees. So this angle in here just in there is 61 degrees. Then if I think about my highlighter, highlight round that angle, highlight round the angle I'm trying to find. I've got an F shape, and F ones are corresponding angles. So I could then say that corresponding, I'm reading this out as well, so you know on earth what I'm writing. Corresponding angles, are equal, which means this one must also be 61 degrees. So I used angles on a straight line and then corresponding. You could have used all sorts of different ones. You might have used corresponding straight away and then angles on a straight line. You might have used vertically opposite. You might have used all sorts of things. All right. So on this one, when we get the answers to these, I'm only going to give you the number answers because there are lots of different ways of doing it, but I want you to figure out what size the angle is. I want you to write down the, uh, the reasons you've used, but I can't check those because they could be practically infinite. All right, There's an awful lot of different combinations. So anyway, work out what those angles are, please. We have unpaused. And we're going to rock through some answers. Now, these are clearly not the same. Whatever angle you use, you might have you know, found that that one is 55 and then use co-interior. But it's 125 degrees. Uh, this one, you might have done maybe corresponding first to show that that's 56. And then the other one is 124. So X, 124. Uh, here, you might have, maybe you used corresponding angles first, maybe. And then vertically opposite, but the angle you're after is 133 degrees. And this one, again, you might have used vertically opposite. So the one in there would be 86 and then corresponding. But what you're after is 86 degrees. Right, so you sometimes have to use more than one reason to get there. Don't forget your highlighter, though. Right, six more before we go off to Dr. Frost and spend a bit of time over there. I want you to highlight around them. I want you to, you know, write down whether you're using alternate or corresponding and then figure out what the missing angles are. Right. What I'm going to say, though, just to give you a bit of a hint on these two down here, let's do E first. Look, I've got a line there and a line there. They are parallel. So they are the important lines. You've got two transversal lines, two diagonal lines. You can only ever use one at a time. You know, only one of them is going to give you the answer you want each time. All right? Don't get confused. Just decide which one you're going to use. Right. Anyway, pause the video. Unpause when you're done.
Good stuff. Okay, let's do some highlighting. Right, highlight around that one, highlight around that one. And did you spot where the um, parallel lines are? It's that one and that one. So they've sort of stopped them at this Z, but they do keep going, you know, in each direction. Uh, we've got a Z shape. That means that they are alternate angles. Alternate angles are equal, so it's 82 degrees. B, we've got two angles to find here. Let's first of all do, uh, let's do Y first. They are F angles. They are corresponding, which means that Y will be equal to 70 degrees. Then I've just got a basic crossroads here. I've got my vertically opposite angles, and vertically opposite angles are equal, so that one is 70, not 76, 70. Down here, back to my highlighter. Uh, I've got the parallel lines coming through top and bottom, and if I highlight round that angle and round that angle, I get a C shape. And we know that if it's a C shape, that is co-interior angles, and they add up to 180. So 180 take away 62 equals 118 degrees. So that one there is 118. D, couple of angles here. I've got my two parallel lines. Well, Y will be vertically opposite. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Then if I want to know Z, I highlight around Y, I highlight round Z, I get a C shape, and they are co-interior angles, and co-interior angles are equal. No, they're not. What am I talking about? Co-interior angles sum to 180. Dear me. 180, take away the angle I've got, means the other one must be 100. Z is 100 degrees. Down to E. Okay, now we have two diagonal lines coming through here. Let's just change the color there, blue. Um, now 70 is on this diagonal line, and X is on this diagonal line. This one I'm just going to just draw a blue line through. It has nothing to do with the one with the 100 on. So I'm going to ignore that one, and I'm just going to look at the, the blue one I've put in. I'm going to highlight around the 70. I'm going to highlight around the X, and I've got a Z shape. Z angles are alternate angles, and alternate angles are equal which means x equals 70 degrees. Last one. Let's highlight where the, or rather draw in where the two parallel lines are. They are there. Now let's do y first. Now y is part of, let's change my pen, it's part of this diagonal line here, which means the angle I'm going to use is this one because that is also to do with that diagonal line. The 60 has nothing to do with the line that the Y is on. So I can't use that. But I can highlight around these. Highlight around the Y. And highlight around the 100. And I get an F shape. F corresponding. So corresponding angles are equal. Which means Y is 100 degrees. It's the same as this one. Now the other line that's coming through, I'll just leave it as it is, has got 60 degrees on it and it's got the Z, right? So that is the, the angle that sort of, you know, relate to each other. And if I used a different highlighter color, cyan, let's highlight, that's not a highlighter, it's a pen. I've got, and that's yellow, oh dear. Right, let's try that again. So highlight around the Z. Let's highlight around the 60, and I've got a C shape, and they are co-interior, which means that uh, this is, well, it's fine, 180 take away 60 equals 120 degrees, because co-interior angles sum to 180. Z is 120 degrees. So be careful about which diagonal line you're using. All right. So, off to um, Dr. Frost, where there's uh, angles on parallel lines. I want you to really have a good go at those. If you get things wrong, I want you to have another go at them, please, until you get as many right as possible, ideally all of them. If you do have some time left over, I'm going to put a little link to a video that shows you how you can pick up times tables or possibly choose another topic to work 
on. And obviously, if you need any help with that, get hold of me. But I'll put a link on so it shows you how to do extra work on there to fill up the rest of the time if you need it. You might not need it. All right. Okay, well done. See you next time. Bye-bye.